Hi, this is Irene. I'm the Director of Ultrasonography for Internal Medicine at the University of Calgary. In this video, I'll be going over the technique of evaluating the internal jugular vein using point-of-care ultrasound for the purposes of estimating the jugular venous pressure, or JVP. Now, this is often used as an estimate of central venous pressure. I won't be going over the pros and cons and interpretation issues of that for this video. Instead, I'm going to go over only the technique on how to do the examination and the common pitfalls. I'm also going to assume that you know how to examine the internal jugular vein at the bedside, and if you're not familiar, there are a number of resources that you can turn to. When we're looking for at the jugular vein, we're typically looking for the highest point in which the pulsations could be seen, um, and that's usually during the expiratory phase. What ultrasound can do is to help you identify that point of collapse um, visually by correlating it with the sonographic exam. So here is a longitudinal view of the internal jugular vein, and the point of collapse can be seen here by this big arrow. How to do this exam? You should start out doing a transverse plane with the, with the uh, transducer marker towards the patient's right. And then once you have done that, confirm your findings by rotating and pointing the transducer marker towards the patient's head for a longitudinal view. So in terms of anatomy, the internal jugular vein is underneath the sternocleidomastoid muscle, and the carotid artery is a little bit medial and underneath it, and then you have your thyroid lobe here. So in obtaining a transverse cut, um, it's similar to the way you would interpret a CT scan by looking from the patient's feet towards the patient's head, like so. And what you'll see is that the jugular vein is, tends to be on the left-hand side of the screen, the, the carotid is to the right or just beneath it, and then you have your thyroid lobe. So that's what an image, a still image of that would look like. Here's the sternocleidomastoid muscle and your thyroid lobe over here, and you have a carotid and the internal jugular vein just to the left uh, or lateral to it. The differences between an internal jugular vein and the carotid can be seen um, in that the carotid tends to be a bit more circular in shape, whereas the internal jugular vein is less so. And another feature that differentiate between the two include the fact that the internal jugular vein tends to be biphasic in nature, whereas the carotid is unilateral pulsations. And another feature that I commonly use is the compressibility. So the internal jugular vein is compressible at the bedside with, when you press on with the transducer, whereas the carotid artery is less compressible or not compressible. Now, I won't be going over all the features or differentiating features between the carotid artery or the internal jugular vein. Um, a future video will cover that. Um, but suffice it to say, use as many of these maneuvers as you can, uh, including but not limited to the hepatojugular reflux and valsalva maneuvers. Once you've identified or you're convinced that you have the internal jugular vein in view, what you should do is slide your transducer towards the patient's head to identify the point of collapse where it's extremely small. So here's one where you can see that the uh, internal jugular vein is not visible at all, and this is during inspiration, and during expiration some of that actually does show up. And then you rotate your, keeping your IJ in view, rotate it until you get a longitudinal view, and again that's rotating with the transducer marker towards the patient's head. And once you've done that, slowly slide the transducer mark um, towards the patient's head to re look for the point of collapse again, and hopefully the transfers will correspond to the same point as your uh, longitudinal image. So here you can see the point of collapse is just um, off the edge of the screen right here, um, and that would correspond to the edge of the probe right there on the, in terms of surface anatomy. Alternatively, if there's room, you could move the point of collapse to the mid-screen, in which case the point of collapse would be, would correspond to the mid-transducer. So what are some of the common pitfalls? Uh, one is excessive pressure. So if you think you found the point of collapse, it's a good habit to get into to lift up on the pressure uh, with the transducer 
on, from the patient's skin. If the internal jugular vein gets bigger when you do so, then you haven't found a point of collapse. You need to slide a little higher still. The second issue to watch out for is not imaging the internal jugular vein is at its widest diameter. So if you image the sides of the internal jugular vein, it will look very, very collapsed and very, very small. Um, so what you need to try to do is to try to image it at its widest diameter. The third potential issue is heel towing. So if you have excessive pressure on one end of the transducer over the other, it can actually potentially create a false apex. And the last but not least, uh, even if you don't heel toe, um, if you don't image the the um, internal jugular vein, um, if you image it at an angle like so, what you can do is actually end up creating a false apex. So at the edge of the transducer here, you'll see a false apex. So that's it. The take-home messages are when you do image the IJ, make sure you do so in two points. Find a point of collapse and correlate it to the patient's um, surface anatomy. And that would be the point in which you measure your JVP from. Be careful in terms of the, the amount of pressure you exert on the transducer uh, on the patient's skin. Try not to heel toe. Image the IJ at its widest diameter and avoid foreshortening. And thanks for tuning in.